if James Charles is willing to try to get around FDA regulations for this, it is highly likely that other corners have been cut that could potentially compromise customers who are using this product. Hi there and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. Today we're going to be discussing James Charles painted makeup line again. I, I know we keep talking about it, but there keeps being more that comes out that I feel like I need to comment on. Now that the face paints are actually launched, we can see the ingredients online. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on them if I think it's a unique formula. And specifically, we're going to be talking about one ingredient that might get this brand into trouble legally. And we're going to cover that first because I'm sure that's probably going to be the most interesting part to everybody. This is the ingredients list as you can see here. I don't know if James Charles himself put this together because he acts like he did everything else himself. This ingredients list already has quite a few issues. What brands will do is when they put the ingredients list, they will use commas to separate ingredients. That is not happening in this case. There are no commas and some of these ingredients actually are two words so it's hard to denote if a space is a to indicate a different ingredient or if the space is just a separation of words i'm more familiar with these ingredients so i know what the ingredient actually is but for the average person they may not know that another thing is that there's actually a misspelling that i found on here where it says triethoxy caprosilane it's actually triethoxy capril ill extra yl there silane and that for me is already a red flag of a brand i start to question other things when i see that now we're going to get to the colorants as you can see there's a lot of colorants listed here and even if I change the shade, for instance, this red one, all the ingredients are still the same. There was no change. This is not an uncommon practice. Typically brands will even do this on the outside packaging where they can put plus or minus and they'll put the different colorants because obviously those vary from shade to shade. But overall, the ingredients are about the same, which is what I think the case is here, which is why all of these are listed here. These are all the possible colorants that are in the paint. Now, there are two of concern. We're specifically gonna focus on the colorants in this video. For a little bit of background, the FDA does do a lot of regulation on colorants. If it is a FDNC color, if it's a DNC color, that's actually gonna be required to be batch certified. So each batch has to be certified by the FDA before it can be used in cosmetics, food, drugs, what have you. And all colorants, even the ones that are not batch certified here, for example, you have chromium oxide, chromium hydroxide, do have limitations on what type of products that it can be used in. Some colorants are not allowed for lip products, some colorants are not allowed for eye products, some up till certain percentages they may be used at. The issue for this is actually some of the red colorants in here. So we have to remember that these are kind of marketed as an all over face paint for the eye, for the lip, everywhere. And there are two colorants in here that are not permitted to be used in products intended to be used around the eye. One is the Red 28 Lake here, that is not permitted for eye use, and Red 36 Lake is not permitted for eye use. The reason why these are not permitted for eye use is due to concerns of irritation. The risk of irritation was obviously significant enough that the FDA had decided that these were not permitted for use around the eye. Whether or not you agree with it, that is still the rule that is in place and it is for a reason. The Red 40 Lake colorant in these formulas or whichever formulas is permitted for eye use, so it's not all red colorants that do this. So that means any of the shades of the painted face paint that includes red 36 or the red 28 lake are not recommended for use around the eyes. So based on what is on the website, we don't know which shade it is. I can be pretty sure that the red shade does contain these two colorants, but also the purple might likely I have seen shades very similar to those ones of eyeshadows that had a similar warning about not for use around the eye. So at the bottom of the ingredients list, there is a warning on here that says out of eyes, which I don't know if that's James Charles way of kind of getting around that, that you should not have it in your eye, but the issue isn't in your eye, it's around your eye. It's a sensitive skin around your eye. And they also put in case of irritation, discontinue use. I don't think those little warnings are technically enough 
to get around not following the rules. We don't know what the actual physical packaging says either. I did find pictures of people unboxing the paint bucket and I couldn't see any warnings from the video I saw. It may have something on specifically the ones that contain these colorants that says not recommended for eye use. So what sometimes they'll do is on packaging in a very small font, they'll put like shade X, Y, and Z are not recommended for use around the eye, but it's so small and sometimes it's only on the outside packaging. And with that, I think it's also hard for customers to know because when you look at, for instance, the red face paint, all of the depictions of it in use on the website are on the eye. In fact, I'm pretty sure all of his are like that where they're all on the eye. And honestly, at that point, I would make the argument that you're not marketing this as a face paint. You're marketing it as an eye paint, essentially. Based on the advertisement alone is what that feels like to me. So that being said, James Charles can't even claim that he doesn't know about this. In fact, something similar happened with his Morphe eyeshadow palette. When he launched it, he called it a pressed pigment palette and tried to say it was called a pressed pigment palette because everything is super pigmented. But really it got called that because then that way they weren't calling it an eyeshadow palette. So it seems like they're not recommending it for use on the eye. There were some customers with the James Charles palette that actually did get irritation and had either like tweeted about it or did something, posted somewhere about it. And he kind of blew them off and told them, all red eyeshadow does this, all red eyeshadow shades. And again, the limitations on the red pigment are not due to staining. It is due to the irritation. Wait, have you subscribed? Well, if you, if you agree to subscribe, I'm gonna show you my kitty cat. Say hi, Bruno. Thank you for subscribing to my mom. And some of the customers of the James Charles palette did report this. So that already shows that this issue is confirmed and this is the reason why these limitations exist. And now because of this, Morphe was actually sued for a variety of palettes, but including the James Charles palette and they were sued because of how unclear the warnings were, how small they were, how the advertisement was, but the lawsuit never ended up going through because Forma Beauty filed for bankruptcy. Huda Beauty actually got sued for their neon palettes because they also contain colorants that were deemed unsafe for the eyes by the FDA. And these palettes look just like every eyeshadow palette so the customer would not be able to differentiate what's an eyeshadow palette versus what should not be used on the eyes. And Huda Beauty actually did settle on this outside of court and has no plans to make these kind of palettes again. So interpret that information as you see fit. And another issue with that red 36 is it's also only allowed in percentages up to 3% in lip products. Now, we don't know what the concentration is, but I would be very curious if it was more than 3%. I would like to think that it's probably not more than 3%, but it is possible that it could be at a level of 3%. Hope the percentage is under 3% so it's safe for lip use as well. So there are definitely ways to use these pigments, but make sure you're honest in what the limitations of the product use is. For instance, House Labs on Sephora, this House Labs Power Pigment Paint, it is a similar idea, but on the shades that are not for eye use, when you click it, it very, very highly says, do not use around the eyes. And any of the marketing pictures on the Sephora website for those specific shades that are not eye safe, do not have any pictures where it's being used on the eyes. The ones that are eye safe, actually I'm wearing one today that I could also use on the eyes, does have a picture of it being used on the eyes because it is safe. So there are ways to do this while being more honest about it. And then at that point, if you've done all this and you've covered your bases, then at least that way it's up to the customer if they want to use it. I hope more brands are gonna be held to this now, now that Mokra is coming into fruition and the guidance documents are coming out and that they will have enough money to actually be able to implement these and to keep up with them. And the reason why I continue to be so vocal about this issue, even though it doesn't really affect me, a lot of people know about this, not everyone knows about this. If James Charles is willing to try to get around FDA regulations for this, 
It is highly likely that other corners have been cut that could potentially compromise customers who are using this product. So aside from the potential legal issues of this product, this was touted as a very original formula. We know that's not the case now. There are a ton of formulas out there that are face paints that are very similar to this. So I took a look at the ingredients to try to see if maybe this was something that was very unique. A lot of this formula, other than the colorants, is solvent. So a solvent is something that dissolves other things into it. These are kind of like what you would think is the base of a formula. This one doesn't have any water. It does have isododecane, which is thin and very quick drying. Cyclopentasiloxane, which is a more silicone. This is gonna help spreadability. Alcohol, which is in a lower amount, isododecane, and isododecane and cyclopentasiloxane are higher up on the list. And propylene carbonate. Next that we're gonna talk about is the thickeners in this formula. There is synthetic beeswax in this formula that is gonna add a thicker texture. That's also gonna help with some water resistance and stydertimonium hectorite. So for a film former and also as a binding agent, you're gonna have VP slash hexadecene copolymer and also as a binding agent, you're gonna have the triethoxy capril ill silane. You have dimethicone in this formula. That's going to help with spreadability, smoothing, giving it a smooth look to it. For pacifying purposes, because obviously you want this to be pigmented, this is going to have aluminum hydroxide in it. There's also cornstarch in this formula. That's going to help with mattifying properties so it's not super shiny looking. And it also can help with film forming abilities as well. And for the preservative system, you're gonna have phenoxyethanol, which is gonna help reduce microbial growth. I think that's sufficient for this to only have that one in here. Because this isn't a water-based formula, it's not going to be prone to bacterial growth, hopefully, hopefully. And tocopherol acetate, which is very commonly used, that's not gonna be so much antimicrobial. It is an antioxidant, it is gonna help the product from going rancid, essentially. So one area that I don't think I would recommend this for is on the lips. There aren't hydrating ingredients in here. Like I said, nothing is really water-based, so it's going to end up feeling probably pretty dry on the lips. It wouldn't be very comfortable to wear. I could see the eye safe shades, being working as an eyeliner perhaps. This formula is also not super unique either. The House Laboratories, Lady Gaga's brand equivalent to this, has isododecane, it has the dysteronimonium hectorite, it has a copolymer, and that one actually does have some seed oils in there, things like that that are gonna make it feel probably a little bit more comfortable. So I would recommend that for sure. I think there's a very limited group of people who are actually gonna be buying this. I even had a hard time trying to find re reviews on YouTube, maybe more of the people are on TikTok now. So for me, this product is a no, but that's probably not surprising. I think there are other brands out there that I would much rather purchase from. And fingers crossed I don't have to make another video about this. If there are quality control issues, obviously that would be the time that I would make a video. But as with every video, if you learned something today, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment on what you learned today. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!